David Cobb from CBS Sports. He joins us on the Farm Bureau guest line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team at Mississippi Farm Bureau. David, have you come down off the high of last weekend in college football? I mean, how good was that? Yeah, it was amazing. It's been such a fun season. It really feels like everything is like all the way back to normal after COVID now and the, the results, the finishes, the drama. It, it's been awesome. You know, college football gets knocked for being a little top heavy, being predictable. And even if we end up with a predictable blend of teams in the playoff, at least the journey to get there this year has been has been amazing. So that Tennessee-Alabama game might have taken the cake in terms of best game of the year. And uh, to be the one live blogging that one for, for CBS, my, my heart rate was, was certainly through the roof. Uh, not even uh, due to the fact that Tennessee was my alma mater. It's just, it was just that good of a game. Can you imagine going through like uh, through life like that schmuck Barrett Selly who thinks that four teams is the right way to determine a champion instead of going to a twelve team playoff? <laughs> I know, I know. I, I I genuinely get in some some pretty good debates with uh, with different people who disagree with me on this. I, I enjoy. I By enjoy the way, the I debate. like Barrett a lot. We we've been friends for a long time. I'd call I him a schmuck yeah. to his face. <laughs> and, and and he deserves that. So I'm glad you yes. do that. I'm glad you, you re- remind him of that. So uh, we have good natured debates uh, within the CBS team about it all the time. Uh, it's, it's, it's time though. It's time to go to 12 teams. Uh, there's, there's some depth in the sport, especially in a season like this beyond the top three or four. Look at Texas, everybody. I'm not sure if I'm on board with it yet, but everybody is saying, well, what if Quinn Ewers had been healthy for the second half of their game against Alabama? What if he had been healthy the following week against Texas Tech when they lost? Or I guess it was a couple weeks later. But the point is, you know, we would get to see a team like Texas get to prove itself in the playoff if there were a 12-team format. And as things stand now, it's highly unlikely that they would even have a shot even if they won out. So I'm ready for it, and I'm glad they're, they're meeting, talking it over today. It doesn't sound like they've come, you know, too terribly far in terms of actually making things concrete. But I'm glad we're moving in that direction. If Lane Kiffin is worried about rat poison then this week in the media has been like the anti-venom that he longs for because (laughs) everybody is picking lsu to win this game it's a little crazy honestly uh or at least i think it is now they all, all the people picking lsu may be proven right on saturday when you look at this matchup between Ole miss and lsu what what do you see david yeah, I don't get it. So when the lines first came out on Sunday for this game, I thought, wow, Ole Miss is only favored by two. And I was, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm all over that. Like, that line's going to move. Ole Miss will be, will close as a six and a half point favorite, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's what I thought was going to happen. It's been the exact opposite. And I don't really understand why, because really, LSU has been so up and down. Ole Miss has been one of the most consistent teams in the country this season. And the only thing that I can really think of is that they're just over-inflating the, uh, the home field advantage that, that LSU is going to have in this game. Uh, so, you know, this is a team that in its last home game, though, just lost, you know, by 27 to Tennessee in, in, in Tiger Stadium. So I, I think we're maybe overvaluing the home field advantage aspect of it here. Uh, Ole Miss being slept on probably due to the fact that its schedule has been pretty easy to this point. But, you know, they, they've proven who, you, who they are game in, game out, week in, week out. And, their strength of running the football isn't necessarily uh, something that LSU is is well poised to stop. So uh, I'm with you guys. I think it's odd. Uh, I, I like Ole Miss in this game you know, straight up. What is the most important matchup in the matchup between in the game between LSU and Ole Miss? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be LSU's front seven against this Ole Miss running game because I mean, Ole Miss has just gone so far the direction of the run that uh, it's, it's just a huge part of their identity here. But if, if LSU can stop them from getting four or five yards a pop, then all of a sudden you know, we might have to see Jackson Dart go and win a game for him, which I don't think is really a situation they've been in this season. So uh, that would be you know, the thing that sticks out to me the most. But you know, I, I go back to LSU's game against Auburn a few weeks back, and maybe people are ragging Ole Miss for, for struggling a little bit against Auburn last week. But LSU uh, nearly got doubled up in total yardage by Auburn and was fortunate to beat Auburn due to uh, so some turnovers on, on uh, Auburn's part. So uh, if that's a comparison that we're going to make, I mean, I don't necessarily look at that and see an LSU team that's, that's real well-equipped 
to slow down what Ole Miss does. So I think I think we're we're inflating well what LSU is based off the game they had at Florida last week. And you know the reality is that that Florida team is is struggling and trying to figure things out. So uh, I just wouldn't read as much into it as maybe some people are. All right, so Mississippi State and Alabama. Alabama, a prohibitive favorite in this game. Historically, like in, at least in recent history, Mississippi State has had a lot of trouble, especially in Tuscaloosa, scoring at all against Alabama. Why can Saturday be different, or can it? Well, I think the thing that I that popped out to me, like when you sort of look at Mississippi State's statistical profile, they are second in the country in terms of red zone touchdown percentage. And they've done that against a reasonably difficult schedule to this point. So if they can hold Alabama to field goals and score touchdowns in the red zone, then, yeah, that could be their ticket to this this being different. I mean, this is a huge spread. Everyone expects Alabama to come out angry. Uh, they've taken out some vengeance on Mississippi State in the past. You know, clearly Mike Leach has had little success against Saban to this point. But you know, maybe that, that red zone offense is, is going to be a key here because we saw it a couple times last week where Alabama had to settle for field goals took a more conservative approach in a game where points were at a premium and it came back to bite them, you know, and, and if they're not, uh, if Mississippi State can win the red zone battle, I mean, that would be their, really their only ticket in my mind to, to keep in this one super close. Cause I, yeah. I do expect Alabama to come out pretty angry. Yeah, I, I think so though. I do see Alabama having flaws. The, the thing that stands out to me is it, it appears as if in terms of Alabama's defense, where, where they're gettable is, is pushing the ball down the field, and that's just not much of what Mississippi State has done this year. Yeah, it's nickel and dime you, you know, with the air raid stuff, and, and that's that that's an issue. Uh, I mean, honestly, Alabama has so many issues, though, to, to clean up. And until they get the penalty stuff sorted out, like they're going to keep giving teams free first downs and keep putting themselves behind the chains until they can get their, their penalty numbers down to a manageable level. I mean, last week against Tennessee was just the latest example. The penalty stuff, the undisciplined, the undisciplined play has been an issue for Alabama all season, and that was just the first time that it actually cost them a game. So, I mean, heck, if Texas A&M can be on the road in Tuscaloosa and have Alabama against the wall on the last play of the game, I know that was with without Bryce Young on the field for the Crimson Tide, but <laughs> never count Mississippi State out because I just wouldn't have thought that Texas A&M could get them to that point. Mississippi State's a better team. I'd love to hit on three national games. We've got about three minutes left, and we'll see if we can squeeze those in. This UCLA-Oregon matchup that is in Eugene, does the perfect season come to an end this weekend for UCLA? Oregon has been playing well. They have. I think nationally, Oregon has been slept on since it lost in convincing fashion to Georgia to open the season. They looked terrible in that game, but you got to remember that was Dan Lanning's first game as a head coach ever, uh, and, and Oregon was playing against the defending national champions. Since then, Oregon has has been really good, and I think Chip Kelly should be in, in the driver's seat for best first year coaching performance in the country. So. I do think I do think Oregon gets right at home against a UCLA team that has, like Ole Miss, had a pretty weak schedule to this point. Two thirty on Saturday afternoon on ABC, you've got Texas and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State coming off uh, a great game against TCU. Oklahoma State lost the game. The game itself was great, overshadowed by uh, what was happening in uh, in Knoxville. Uh, Oklahoma State bounced back. How big of a test is this for Texas on the road? Huge. Another team, another situation where it looks like the wrong team is favored. Much like I don't think Ole Miss should be an underdog this week. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure Texas should be a, a favorite, let alone a six and a half point favorite, which is what yeah. they are right now. Uh, just totally baffled by that. You know, the Quinn Ewers situation, it's, it just seems everyone's so ready to anoint him. He's a good player, but they almost lost at home to Iowa State last week. So now they're going on the road against an Oklahoma State team that really should be 6-0 and right now, I, I don't see it. So that one's another confounding line, in my opinion. In, in fairness, Texas in recent years would have lost that game to Iowa State, and yet they didn't. They found a way to win. That's true. That is absolutely true. What about uh, what about TCU? So they get the emotional win, packed house, great environment last week. We got 30 seconds. Do they keep it rolling this week at home? Hey, I think so. I've just kind of been riding with them all year long. I mean, I think they're one of the top teams against the spread, and obviously they're six and zero straight up. So uh, TCU has been a surprise. I mean, they're you know Sonny Dykes is the other coach in the running there with um, with uh, Dan Lanning at Oregon for best first year coaching performance. 
if he gets it done against Kansas State, he he he's in in first place in that in that category, no doubt. David, thanks as always for your time. Great stuff today. Yeah.